Welcome to the Virtual CPA Success Show, where we're 100% focused on helping service-based businesses achieve success. Are you a business owner interested in learning how to scale your business? Has your business reached over $1 million in annual revenue? Then this podcast is for you. All right, everybody, welcome to today's podcast. Today uh, is a very special topic because, as everybody knows, there's a lot going on out in the world with uh, the coronavirus. And so um, it's, it's forced a lot of people to have to um, change their work environments and work from home, which is something that some has been doing for a, a very long time. So we wanted to do our part and kind of give some tips of, that we have on working from home. And oftentimes it is, it is situations like this that force people to realize that uh, working from home isn't, isn't that uh, difficult to do. And actually, Summit's uh, work from home model was actually kind of forced into play as well. So I, I am joined by um, Adam and Jody on this podcast, but I want to start with Jody and you kind of tell the, um, tell the story of how Summit did start working from home and how we were, um, how, how it ended up working out for us. Yeah, sure. Uh, we had a client back, we picked up a client back in 2011 that uh, was a completely distributed company. So that means they, they work from home, but they're, uh, they were kind of unique because they actually started working from home. So they never had a brick and mortar and then uh, moved to it. They actually started, you know, completely uh, distributed. So uh, we had them for, well, we still have them as a client, but over the first couple of years, we're learning, hey, here's what could be beneficial. Here's the good and the bad about working from home. And is this something that we think that our team would embrace and would our clients embrace it? You know, because we, we currently were working virtually with our clients, meaning that we did video conferencing. We never really met face to face with clients. We did everything, you know, over the internet. And so it was kind of, we were kind of working with our clients in that manner. So could we actually translate that and work from home? So we uh, decided to uh, take the leap of faith, and I met with the, the team, and I thought everybody would be pretty excited about it and found out just the contrary. Nobody wanted to work from home. And it was like I heard all of the issues that could possibly potentially happen by working from home. You know, we wouldn't collaborate. You know, couldn't I had kids running around, Internet. You know, you name it, uh, the, I, I heard it. And, and it was one of those things that I was like, well – we force our entire team at that point of 18 people to, to work from home and possibly lose them? Or do I concede and, and just kind of build on to our existing uh, building and make it uh, accessible for, you know, possibly growth of maybe 30 people over the next 10 years or something like that? And I thought, well, let's go ahead and just uh, spend the money and do it. So we, we did. We kicked everybody out of the office, spent about 100 grand and uh, remodeled the entire office. It took about six weeks to do. And uh, originally, it was supposed to only take four weeks. And so I told the team, hey, four weeks, you got to work from home for four weeks. And they did. They they worked from home. And then uh, it was kind of funny because about the fourth and fifth week, people started coming and say, you know what? Is it okay if I just work from home going forward? I kind of like it. <laughs> I'm like, that's cool. And so then uh, six weeks came on. And right before I bought the signage to put in the front there, we had about the entire team. It was like six people, all but six. So 12 of the 18 people decided, you know, hey, uh, it's, I think this is cool. I think you can do this. And, and so I thought, well, that's pretty cool. So we had a uh, room for 30 and we had six people in the entire office. It was pretty, uh, pretty how, you know, echoey for a, for a real long time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of how we started. Adam, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, I was one of those that didn't want to work from home. And I came back whenever it got built back. I mean, the, the biggest difference was just your ability to nest at home. You know, I wasn't too concerned about the the Internet. I was concerned about, you know, the kids. That was a real thing. Also, for me, it was like workspace. I think that's, you know, one of the most essential things you can do from working from home. You have to have, you know, people are always like, hey, work-life balance. I don't know when to separate um, you know, being able to have a dedicated space where you can nest and actually set up, that was the difference. I mean, whenever I would work and do taxes at night or do some work at night, I was working off of a kitchen table or off of the coffee table in the living room or something like that. You know, kids were coming in or it, it would just, you have to clean it up every day. That's difficult. But once I was able to establish a desk and a place that was my own that I didn't ever have to pick up or, or reset every single day, it made a bit of a difference. And then, you know, coming back into the office, it was kind of more of like an aha, like, why am I here? Like, I don't really need to be here. Um, and then whenever the team wasn't even here, you know, or partially not here, um, especially because, you know, whenever we had our first distributed employee, that was by happenstance, you know, her husband had moved away and she needed, you know, we decided, hey, we'll just keep her on. You know, she noticed there was a bit of a, a, a you know, a disconnect from a culture standpoint. And so, that's Jody, whenever you found Sococo, and we were using that as our virtual office, and we started mandating that even if you were in office, 
you had to communicate through the virtual office. You know, you can't like go and congregate in a bunch of offices and do that kind of thing. Just so we were told. Well, everybody had no problem with that, right? I can tell you, (laughs) we're not on camera. We're on camera now. I know this this podcast isn't on camera, but we're on podcast. Yeah, our our biggest probably hiccup was, um, it wasn't that people minded um, necessarily like hiding behind the camera and meeting in the virtual office. People were totally down with that. It was nobody wanted to turn on their camera. Um, and for those of you that don't know Jody, he's usually a pretty passive guy, but he lost his stuff one day and just basically told everybody like plan- walked around the office one night when everybody left and like planted their um, their cameras on their their chairs and basically told everybody like don't come to work if you're not going to turn on your camera. And, uh, and so you know it's kind of one of those things. Whenever you know they're used to me barking all the time, so it's kind of like yeah he'll, he'll he'll chill out. But whenever Jody did it, everybody was like oh well we better turn on our camera. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was amazing how all the camera issues work. It got figured out real quick. <laughs> and, and it, I think it's, <laughs> and it's, it's still part of our culture too. Like I know that oftentimes I'll be with Sokoko. You can tell what people are doing in their room. And so oftentimes I'll be sitting there seeing two people talking and their cameras aren't on. And I'll just go knock in there and be like, Hey, what's going on in here? Are we like wearing our pajamas? Why are our cameras on? And it's like it's, instantly the cameras turn on and you don't see it that often because it really is just part of our culture that cameras need to be on. If we're talking to each other, the cameras mm-hmm. are on. And that, that is a big part of our culture for sure. And I think it makes a big yeah, difference. And I, I think that was one of the big parts when people had a real hesitation on, you know, going virtual, you know, can we actually do it? Because all those excuses, you know, came out, well, camera, can't get the camera to work or internet, like we mentioned before, whatever. But when they're forced to do it, you know, it was, it was, it was amazing how they figured it out, you know, and with ours, it was, it was the you know issue of building a, bu- building a building, you know, we had to gut it out completely. They couldn't actually be in there uh, because of the, you know, the construction's going on. So they had to work from home. And with the virus going on right now, again, another exact same thing, you know, forced to work outside of your home, you kind of figure out all the issues that, you know, would be preventing you from doing it, you know, kind of knocks those obstacles out, you know, one at a time. It'll be interesting to see how many people, like once this all passes over and it's time to go back to the office, how policies change, you know, people being able to work remotely and willing to work remotely more often like us, it'll be interesting to see how people's attitude change once they have the ability to force themselves to nest, you know, Mm -hmm. set up the technology, set up the workspace do all those kind of things, really get into a groove. Cause once you do, we still have an office, um, but uh, man, I hate going to it. Um, Mm -hmm. So there's just no reason to, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how that translates. Yeah, and we still have an office because I own the building. That's right. pretty much the, you got stuck with the, the, building <laughs> the only reason. The $100,000 reno. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, but not, not over the course I'm sticking of the it out. I'm sticking it out, <laughs> damn it. Here we are. Uh, yeah. So I think we've given two pretty good tips so far. I think Adam's first tip about, you know, really having a dedicated space that you can nest. And I, I'd like to add to that, obviously, a door. Mm-hmm. I think a door is huge. And I think especially if you have family at home, whether it's during the summer or whether it's right now, you know, obviously with uh, the coronavirus, a lot of kids are home from school. And I think they even I've had kids here all week and they know when my door is closed that they just don't come in because I'm either in a meeting or I'm talking to someone and they just know that that's um, like my office. And occasionally I'll work with my door open and they will pop in. But I think add to that, I think that's that's a big thing. And then, two, I think we've talked about the cameras. I think the cameras is key. It really helps you keep that. it keeps that family feel. You get to know each other. Even, um, you know, again, we've, it took a while before I met anyone at Summit, but I knew who people were. I met Jody at the airport. I could recognize him other than his height. I knew what he looked like. I knew who well, I was. much for. taller than you expected. That those are- <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> least, yeah that's like, what you believe, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, with that, though, I'll, I'll give you like what I think a pro tip is, especially now starting to hear all these people that aren't used to working from home, trying to navigate that, especially with children at home. I know it's really hip and cool to have your AirPods in and all this other stuff. And some people like to just flip up the laptop and talk on the laptop. I personally, from day one, I had kids running around home. Like at a certain time of the day, they just got home. I would always hold I, all the um, headsets. They come with uh, the earpieces. They'll have a, like a little mute button on their boom. And I, and even the corded ones, you can hold it in your hand like a Jeopardy clicker. And I mastered <laughs> turning on and off my mute on a regular basis. Like I'm talking then I click mute really quick talk. You know, you're not trying to find it on the screen and click mute. You can just hold your hand up by your face and click the boom button on and off. And that whenever the kids are screaming or somebody comes running in, you can just click mute 
and then tell them to be quiet. Click. Yeah. And anyway, we should just do blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's not always that nice, but, <laughs> but yeah. Um, you know, you have to slide off camera sometimes, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely for me, one of the things that I've noticed about people that aren't used to working from home with disruptions is they're trying to still talk to their laptop and manage all the noise around them. And it's like, if you had the headgear, you know, from a technology standpoint on top of the camera, it's click, boom, click, boom, click, boom. And it's not that big of a distraction. Mm -hmm. I think another thing is, is that the equipment that you have has got to be consistent to the equipment that you're used to working with. So if you have, if you're used to like a big screen with multiple monitors set up, or if you have a multiple monitor set up at work and you come home and you're working just on your laptop, that's really tough. <laughs> that's a tough one to, to adjust to. So I think, you know, you've got to have a, the same technology set up at home for to really, really get the most benefit out of it. Otherwise, it does feel like you're you're in a hotel room and you're like, oh no, what do I? You're worried about it. Doesn't you know? Doesn't have that same feel. Doesn't have that same workability. I guess if that's even a even a term. No, I definitely agree with that. I think that the uh, multiple monitors, once you work on them for a week, you're addicted to it and you're used to it and you really, you really do need it. And I think the same goes for, you know, everything, chairs, all that stuff. You want to feel completely comfortable in your working space and working from home is, is, is the same thing. You want to be comfortable that you're working, right? You don't want to be in a, a lounger with the TV on in the background with your laptop just up in your lap in the middle of the living room, right? Like you want to actually feel like you're in a workspace and, you know, I have work material on the walls. I have work books. Like this is truly my work office and it feels like it did when I worked in corporate. So I think that is... Um, yeah, I'd say a tip there too would be is if you don't want to go out and buy multiple monitors and let's say you do have a den with a TV in it, just convert that TV to a, a monitor. You know, it's a big enough TV, convert to a monitor and then uh, it'll automatically have the separate screens. You can, you know, flip to different things and make it a, you know, four monitor system or a three monitor system without having to go out and get it. So, you know, that, that might be a tip for those that uh, don't want to spend the extra money for, for monitors. Okay, I got, a, I got a bizarre tip for you that I think works for me personally, because <laughs> we always talk about the door and the separation and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm harassing my children about this now that they're home all the time. And my particular tip irritates my wife. Every day I get ready for work and I put my shoes on. And she's always like, why do you put your shoes on when you're just walking to the den? Like you're not going anywhere. And for me personally, it's almost like if I'm just walking around in my shoes, it feels like I'm laying in the living room with the laptop on my lap. I need to put my shoes on and come in. Like, of course, you know, you need to dress up from the neck up. We always joke, you know, for the camera and stuff like that. So you can put the give up pants on and have the sweatpants. But there's something mentally for me about putting on shoes that I feel like I'm in the moment or doing something. And then if I walk out the door and I, you know, ready to associate with family, kick off the shoes, all of a sudden there's like this, I don't know. I, I just noticed that I did it for a long time. And then all of a sudden she kept calling me on it. And I'm like, well, that's probably my, the way I break. So I know like you've got a weird one, Jamie, I think, you know, where, you know, you getting ready in the morning is probably atypical for people working from home, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I've, what I made a point of, and I, again, when I took this job, um, a lot of people thought I was crazy because they're like, you're an extrovert. You, your favorite part of work is talking to people. Like, you know, you're, you're at work for 11 hours. You probably spend five of them just talking to people because that's who you are. And so one of the things that was important to me was to keep my routine. And so I, I basically did not change what I was doing, whether I was driving to an office or driving to, um, driving to, um, driving back to my house. And so I kept my workout routine. I do the exact same thing that I did when I when I was um, working at an office. Like I go to the gym, I work out, I shower there, I get dressed, I talk to people, then I come home and go to, go back to my office downstairs. And so I basically have kept my routine exactly the same. Now, obviously, that's a little different now because uh, the gyms are all closed here in Colorado. But again, I'm still trying to do the same thing. Instead of going to the gym, I'll go outside and go for a run. I'll do something in the, those early morning hours that I used to do the gym because I don't want to lose that routine. I'm the same way, Adam. I, I was laughing as you were saying that because I do the same thing. I've never worked a day in my life without my shoes on. Like I have my shoes mm -hmm. on here. I'm, I get dressed. I do the full, full exact same morning routine I did when I was going mm -hmm. to the office. It's just, I'm, I'm sometimes just going downstairs. So yeah, it's, it's, I, I think that's one of the keys for me was making sure that I kept those routines up that I had when I was working. Yeah, it's kind of funny because Jamie mentioned that he's an extrovert. I mean, Adam and I are also extroverts, big time extroverts. And so, you know, you think that would hamper the, the feeling or the being, not having to be around people. It's like, I feel like I'm around people more than I ever did in an office. I mean, I'm actually meeting several different people a day. Eye contact is huge when you're meeting people. And then 
Um, we have, you know, it's, it's just not all that, but you know, we do have meetups where we actually do physically get a chance to meet everybody in person. You know, that's, uh, that's also part, especially in a long-term deal. If you decide to use this as a long-term medium, uh, to, to do so pretty huge. And I think what goes with that, and this is the advice I've given. And again, this is a little bit outside of this realm, but you can still make it work is, is a lot of times you can, you can choose who you hang out with a little bit more when you work from home. Right. So like, I, again, I love the people I work with and I do have a lot of really cool conversations with both Jody and Adam and my other coworkers. But at the same time, like I have more time for other people because those couple hours I have in the morning playing basketball with my friends, like that's actual like chosen time that I'm choosing to do where I'm hanging out with them versus in the past where I would be spending, you know, 11 hours at the office, just hanging out with workers because there's the only people around. And so you can kind of choose those things you're going to do, whether it's go upstairs and have lunch with your wife or, you know, organize a, a, lunch meet up with one of your friends you haven't seen for a while. It's a lot easier to do when you work from home and make sure you have the time to like do those type of things when you work from home. But again, it's still getting back and getting focused and getting back to work after you're done with those type of things. And I think that it is important to make sure that you, and even sometimes volunteering too, that's another way to do it. If you want to spend some time talking to people, why not go and volunteer for an hour um, and do something like that at the end of the day so that we can kind of choose who you're spending time with versus it's, it's a forced relationship with your So what I, what I heard from that, Adam, is I heard that he doesn't like hanging around us. Yeah, that's so. why. I was kind of getting. I, I was trying to read between my lines. I was talking about my previous jobs. That's my previous jobs. Been, I was you, talking about five hours. You even mentioned Jody and Adam yeah. in that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. No, I said I like yeah. hanging out with Jody and Adam. But anytime somebody does, I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I'm talking about. Though you, when you're at the office mm-hmm. for 12 hours, 13 hours in the in the office, like you, yes, you're talking to people, and yes, you enjoy spending time with them. But sometimes it's like you know, I'd, I'd rather be like hanging out with the, my friends from high school or something like that. So I think that's what I'm. That's yeah. what I but I, I really do think like the what could get exhausting for people that aren't used to it or feel weird initially is you know just to recap on some of that stuff is get a dedicated space, have a door if you can, make sure you nest properly with the great technology camera an appropriate headset you know we've got uh, a logistics one uh, a logitech one i mean that's that's pretty good and plantonics there's a couple of them out there where you got some really good range you got the boom you got all that kind of stuff like i really think you know the technology is key but then getting up and getting ready if you wore a suit to work every day put on your suit like you know what i mean it's a mental shift whenever you do that and that's why i was saying harassing my kids like the kids get up and they're in their pajamas and they're just kind of sitting around it's like no get ready for school you know you got some e-learning if you don't have e-learning i don't care like get up get ready for the day it's a total different mind shift mm-hmm. and I, I would say the biggest thing that we haven't even mentioned yet is just communicating uh, everybody's got to communicate through the same the same way. So if you're doing video conferencing, I highly recommend, you know, like a, a Zoom or a GoToMeeting or a Sococo or something that you guys can, everybody can communicate and communicate often. And again, on camera is huge. So communication is the, is the big part. Don't go home and just hide, you know, be available. People need to know that when you're available, they need to know that they can get with you. And a lot of times just making phone calls back and forth isn't the right way of doing it. Because we could all be on a phone call with a client, and I'm trying to get hold of both of them, and then I can't get hold of either one of them, and then all of a sudden doubt starts creeping in. Are they actually working? You know, you know, are they just ignoring me? You know, what, what's what's going on? They're probably ignoring me. It's probably the case. They're, yeah, usually they definitely actually be working. But anyways, <laughs> that you know, you, you start, you know, doubt starts creeping in your mind, and that's not not good. You don't want that. So you know, having something on a visual, we use a product called Sococo, which is a great environment to, to have so that you can actually see people you can see when they're available when they're not available you can see when they're you know you can share screens you know they can collaborate you know it's a really cool tool and there's other tools out there like that uh, but you really need to find that tool and adapt to it pretty quickly even if it's on a temporary basis you know having Sococo for a month or having a product like that for a month is a heck of a lot better than trying to play phone tag with, you know, 20 different people and trying to get conference calls together. And, you know, what a, what a hassle, you know, you need to figure, you need to have the right tool to make that communication a lot easier. Yeah. I think we have, you know, we have a lot of set meetings in our schedule. I think, you know, anybody that's listening to this podcast is the same way. You have so many set meetings in your schedule, but with this tool like Sococo, you can go outside of those set meetings. So if I, if I just need to talk to Adam for three minutes and I can see that he's in his office by himself, I can go knock on his office door virtually, pop in there, pop the cameras up, ask him the question. He's going to answer the question and then I can move on. And I think that that's what a tool like Sococo does. It, it just seems less formal than, hey, Adam, I need to talk. 
let's look at our calendar to see when I can find those 15 minutes. It's just much more informal and you get a lot more done that way. So I think that is the big benefit as a Coco is it feels like a real office. I can just pop in anybody's office at some time. And so I think, again, if any company is moving to this, whether it's for a month, two months, or maybe thinking about doing this permanently, I would definitely recommend a virtual office just because it, it adds that little bit of flexibility in terms of those meetings. You're not having to like book your calendar up to make those conversations. Yeah. Happen. The reality is, is, I mean, you can work through, you know, emails are frustrating because you're waiting like five minutes to hear back from people. You can work through Slack and hide a little bit, and then you can even send people like zoom or go to meeting invites, but it's still pretty, I don't know if you, if you were looking for the collaboration, because we, we did that for a little while, like we were having some issues with some of our technology and we went to just, you know, going into breakout meetings and stuff. I don't know. It just feels weird. It feels super formal. It doesn't feel like an office. It doesn't feel, you know, like a very collaborative environment. But whenever you can see everybody on a board and just see who's hanging out and who's not and knock on somebody's door, like you said, for just a second, pop in, share screen, share, you know, the video feed and pop out. Big difference. Sococo is a, a lifesaver or any kind of virtual office. Yeah, and we've been virtual since 2013. So it's been a long road, a lot of trial and error for sure. Uh, but I would say the communication thing is, is the biggest thing that you really got to get on top of right away to make everything work. And having the right tools like like a Sococo, like a Zoom, GoToMeeting, whatever that might be, uh, is going to be really imperative for this to be a, a success, you know, win for, you, for everyone that's uh, at home. Because, you know, it's kind of funny because you might may go into this looking at it and thinking, wow, this – is a really bad thing, you know, now I've got to figure out how the disruption you may come out of it with like, wow, this was, that was kind of a blessing in disguise. Cause now we figured it out, you know, instead of our team, you know, having Fridays at home or whatever that might, whatever your policy might've been at the time, maybe like, yeah, this is could work. And we could really save a lot of money over the time if we actually did uh, go distributed and look at all the new employees we could actually hire, you know, throughout the United States versus just in our local, local area. It really opens up a lot of a lot of cool avenues that you really don't think about. You know, we get a couple thousand resumes a year for for jobs. You know, and, and really cool people. You know, partners of accounting firms, graduates from college. I mean, we, we get some really solid solid people. I'd say at least forty to fifty percent of those anybody in this audience would hire if they're looking for an accounting person. You know, we get get that opportunity all the time. Where I know the job market's pretty tough for everyone else. So. It does open a lot of opportunities for sure. Uh, you just have to make sure you tackle it right. You know, don't jump into it without really thinking how to, how to succeed. I know you don't have a whole lot of time to figure it out, but, you know, take these tips for sure and uh, see what you can actually do with them because this could be a really, a really big turning point for your company. Yeah. And I think some of the other things that we um, save some money on too, which is a, is a kind of a big deal is we went without a server a few years back, you know, we were doing terminal servers and doing all that kind of networking and stuff. And we made a pretty big push to make sure that all of our software was cloud-based. And then we really just needed a file server at that point. So, you know, we use SharePoint right now. And so the team can access all the files. Security obviously is a big component of that. So we use tools like Boxcryptor to make sure that if somebody's laptop or a computer at home is exposed, no uh, files can be read on that computer without having that that in there. And we use tools like LastPass to make sure that everybody can share passwords, but they're not exposed. They're randomly generated. They're very large and and unique. Those are some other big tools from working from home. Yeah, and I'd, and I'd say also if you're not not familiar with our company, uh, we're a basically CPA firm. We do 401k audits. We do about. Uh, Oh, a lot. We do a you know, 200, a yeah. couple hundred four hundred K audits a year. We do virtual CFO services. We have over, you know, 110, 115 clients that we've got on virtual CFO services that we have. Uh, we do taxes as well. So we kind of run the gambit when it comes to CPA firms. So all the functions that a typical CPA firm can do, we can do too. Uh, the unique part about us is that we don't actually go to a person's location. So everything is done completely virtual. So not only are we working from home with the team, but we're working with our clients completely virtual from the audits to the tax to the CFO work. And uh, we've been able to uh, be very successful, a lot of growth, and uh, we'll top about $7 million in revenue this year. So again, high trajectory growth rate, you know, based on, you know, being able to implement this model as well as we've done. Yeah, everybody talks about efficiency and time. I mean, think about all the commute time you save in the morning. Think about all the commute time you save going back and forth to clients. If you're in like the accounting space and you're you're doing that kind of stuff, 
it's just uh, really nice to be able to shift meetings. We were running a little late this afternoon. I just bumped a client and said, hey, I'll virtually meet you 15 minutes later. No big deal. Can't do that really whenever you got a line sitting outside your door. You know, or you got to drive office. to somebody's location. Yeah. <laughs> traffic sucks. Yeah, the traffic, traffic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the other thing too, we talked about the tools we use, an interesting experience I had, I was, um, you know, when this, this quarantine kind of started, I was talking to some guy that's a professor at a college nearby and he was talking about having to work from home and he was talking about a whiteboard. He's like, Oh, I don't know how I'm going to work without a whiteboard. So I'm like, dude, I promise you there is some app out there that is a virtual whiteboard that you're going to be able to use for in your classroom. And, and we Googled it on our phones and we found one. And so I think that's the other thing is, is it's crazy the amount of tools that are out there nowadays for people that are working virtually. So don't like be afraid to just like, do a couple different Google searches if something is missing from your workplace. Like we've found the things that work for us, you know, Sococo works for us, the SharePoint, the box scripter, all, all these different tools work for us. But I think the interesting thing is, is like, if there's a challenge you're presented, I promise you someone else has had that challenge and has probably thought of a way to fix it. And so I think there's a lot of other things out there that you can use that are more specific for your organization, whether you're a, um, a creative agency or your CPA firm is a little bit different than ours. I think you're going to be able to find a tool that will really help you meet those needs. Agreed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw our email addresses out there real quick here before I ask kind of the final question. So um, again, we have two email addresses for the, for this podcast because this is a dual podcast. So for our CPA firms out there, uh, you can email us at cpa at summitcpa.net. And for our creative agencies, you can email us at vcfo at summitcpa.net. So again, those are two email addresses. If you have any questions, if you have any topics for us, we'd love to um, make this podcast really tailored for our listeners. So um, please reach out to us again if you want to be a guest on the show. That would be great as well. So yeah, that's uh, our two email addresses out there again. Um, so if uh, before we um, move on, Jody, Adam, any final thoughts that uh, you guys have that we need to want to make sure you have the listeners know about working from home during these um, difficult times? I would just throw out there, and, and maybe Jamie, you can talk about it because I know you, I saw on the Slack channel you thrown out there. Um, you had uh, Alyssa, one of our team members, throw out some stuff there, right? Like some. Uh, yeah. So one thing we did at Summit is we're, we're trying to make um, you know obviously everybody. This is very stressful times. I think this is something that my um, my wife saw honestly for our kids is like the routine that kids go through is really important to them. And so one of the things she's done is she's created a schedule. And she doesn't want stress to come in. And so I'm like, okay, I'm sure that some of the people are dealing with this as well, and people that are working from home are dealing with this as well. So what we did is we created a challenge, you know, just to make sure you are doing things. And so basically, how ours works is you get points for doing certain things. You get points for cooking a homemade meal. You get points for going for a walk outside. You get points for doing push-ups. And basically, they came up with like 10 items that you can get different points for. And every time you get over 50 points, we're going to reward, um, you know, with different things. And so I think that's something we did just to make sure you stay in your routine and you aren't finding yourself locked in your room all day doing nothing and really just uh, working all the time. We want to make sure you do keep those routines, you do keep healthy, and you do keep your your brain strong and thinking about um, things you can do outside of just, um, just working. And I think that's really important. And so far, we've had great participation. It's created a lot of good conversations. We've already had like a sub thread of like people posting, I think like 50 YouTube recipes that they've used. And so it's, it's really created a more sense of teamwork across the team too, as well. So that's one thing that we've done that um, I appreciate you pointing out, Adam. I think it's worked really well so far. Mm -hmm. I would say the, the biggest thing is just going into this as not a negative, you know, it's not a, you know, oh man, I've got to work from home, you know, my company's going to go out of business, you know, that type of situation. You got to look at it more as a positive, turn it into a positive and say, hey, this is a great opportunity to try to figure it out. You know, and we may figure it out. It may be something that we don't want to do again. And that's cool. But it may be one of those things that you can't figure it out and say, you know what, this is something that could really be of a benefit. And I think that's the biggest thing is just the mindset, you know, turning the, the negative out in the world there into a positive is really really huge in getting this implemented because I know we couldn't have done it if we didn't have a positive attitude from the very beginning. You know, if we didn't think, Hey, this, you know, can be done, you know, this is, and when we pushed everybody out there to, because they, they, they didn't think we could because you know, they had the, the mindset that it couldn't be done. And then they figured it out, everything changed. And it was, uh, it was definitely huge for us because, you know, if it wouldn't have, you know, like I mentioned before, we had 18 people when we, we did that back in 2013 and we were, we constructed the building for 30 people thinking we would in 10 years, we'd be able to fill that up. Hopefully, you know, that's kind of, what we were hoping to do. Now we're at uh, 50 plus people, you know, we would have had to buy two buildings of that size, you know, and that, that would have been, that would have been a disaster in that, in that short period of time, but we wouldn't have been able to grow if we weren't with this. Cause our, you know, the, the amount of clients we pick up a year would outpace the ability to actually pick up good talent to service those clients. And so we were able to solve all that 
because of this uh, this model. So I would definitely look at it, you know, not on the negative realm. You know, hey, I've got to work from home, but look at it. Say, how can I make this? You know, how can we make the best out of this? How can I make this something that we could probably implement going forward? And you'd probably be surprised on uh, what the results you get. Yeah, this is where the innovation really happens is when people are, their hands are forced like this. There's always really good things that come out of it. So yeah, that's a great point. I think the attitude is everything. The way you approach things, everything in life, if you have a good attitude about it and you have folks approaching it with a positive mindset, it's going to work out for the best. So I, I definitely think that's a great point, Jody. Awesome. Well, I appreciate uh, you guys jumping on with me in this this afternoon. And I know this was a, um, a good topic because it's uh, very relevant right now. So I appreciate you guys jumping on and talking sure. about now, it. Next time, we'll have to pop on somebody that really likes to work with us. <laughs> that's okay, Adam. <laughs> yeah, this was a job. So. I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. No, thank you. Yeah, no, okay. thanks, Jamie. Right. We'll find someone else. Yeah. All right. Thank thanks, you. Jamie. Appreciate it. Bye. Enjoy this episode? Visit our website at summitcpa.net to get more tips and strategies for achieving virtual CPA success. We're here to be a resource in this ever-changing industry.